subject today is uh, take you all to a more passionate level. And the idea for this webinar and for the title actually became that always when I run a class, I have a pre-questionnaire and I ask people why, what they want to accomplish uh, during the class and and uh, the, you, the most you common answer is that they want to become more passionate. And I think it makes a really good sense because uh, art is about passion, a lot about passion. It's not just a regular thing to do, you know. You have to be somehow passionate to even to feel that, start feeling that you might might want to start creating art. And the passion is the thing that feeds you during any phase of an artist. And I want this webinar to, not to exclude anyone, but to include as, as, as many of you as possible. And so I, I'm, going to ask more questions and you can present those to yourself and you might want to take a notebook you might want to uh, w watch the replay and think about the answers because you know the questions may come so quickly that you might not get the best answers right away but when you think about them uh, the things might start to unravel that way and uh, uh, often writing is often really useful for art for visual art artists too so I, I want to encourage you to have a notebook and write or, or just doodle when I'm asking the questions. And this is more like a, 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 a small working session or self-exploration -explora session. And I think that um, we all deserve uh, a time like that sometimes to uh, sit back and uh, think about uh, creating uh, while we're not creating and uh, and also connect our creating with words and uh, uh, I think that we become more aware of stuff when we connect those those um, things with words too and uh, and I, I also think that uh, no matter what in what stage you are as an artist or what is in your focus at the moment. Um, uh, I think that these questions will resonate with you and, 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 uh, um, and at least I hope so. And, and um, it, they, they are the questions and things that, that always feel current to me at least. And also often uh, people ask about them from me. So I hope you uh, enjoy this session and hope you will have the, the biggest benefit that it can offer. Uh, I have a set of slides here, so I, I will show them um, uh, in, on, on the screen. So I will share the, share the screen so that I can show you the the questions and you can focus on them. So, uh, uh, my first question is actually, what does the passionate level uh, that was there in the title, what does it mean to you? Because I think that uh, we all can define what the passionate means to us. And sometimes in the different stages of life, the passionate uh, can mean different kind of things. But of course, when this is an open question, it's quite difficult to answer this right away. So I've actually set four categories and uh, there, there must be more, but I think that there are the main categories and you can find probably find some of the things there that you might want to write down or, or that will raise some, some ideas. And the first category is that 
passionate might mean to you creative so that you want to get hooked on creating and uh, uh, this this can mean different things uh the first uh thing that people often say is that they want to start creating more regularly because uh everybody understand that art is a is a skill and is a set of skills that also need practicing that no matter how much you think uh, your art won't develop. Even if thinking is part of creating art, but still our mental capacity is actually so much smaller than what it is when we start putting things on paper. That's why even writing down those uh, even visual ideas, writing down them with words is really beneficial because uh, you can then expand your uh, capacity. So, and then when you start making sketches and the pen starts to speak, you can see images, start to see images that raise associations and such that will uh, increase your imagination and that will increase your technical skills and, and that so it's it's not just a mental activity. Uh, then some say that they want to start creating bigger, bigger pieces, pieces that make more impact. And if you always create, for example, 30 minutes, a couple of hours, and then the piece is finished, uh, actually, the if you want to make a bigger impact and you, if you want to um, get deeper, in the creative process, uh, then expanding that time to many sittings, many sessions, uh, that can make a big difference. And also some uh, don't think so much about the size, but about the quality, the, the create pieces that require more skills, learn new skills, apply them uh, to your art, integrate them with the old skills or create pieces that have a deeper meaning. That's all often uh, connected with the passion. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, often if we, uh, often if, when we create the first ideas, first things that come to our minds are not the deepest ones. So uh, that might, might be that you want to create a serious, of of uh, uh, art of paintings any any visual project I'm talking about here any visual project it doesn't have to be a painting it can be uh, a, um, a, for example a design a fabric design it can be a knitting project it can be even a craft project anything creative when you create a series you can you can uh, start. Uh, trusting the ideas so that they get more and more diverse and you, you see, see the flow of your creativity better. And then uh, uh, others say that to really become passionate, uh, they need to set up a process for creating. And with this process, this might sound very technical, and you know my background is in engineering, and uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm I'm a former software engineer, and uh, processes are are really my stuff. But uh, it's it has quite surprised me how much that process stuff is actually applied to art too. And I think that engineering is is a kind of a uh, very skill-oriented field, and that's where the two meet. But with the process, I want to show that a bit more in practice so that it doesn't stay so abstract. So I unfocus this screen a bit so that I can, I can show you some. So with the process, um, I think the shortest way to describe that is that you have some kind of hierarchy with your creative work so that uh, you don't just create big paintings, you don't just create these really tiny sketches, but you have a, um, a kind of gradient 
of uh, pieces. For example, I often do this. So I have sketchbooks and old journals where I uh, record down my ideas. I have notebooks where I write down them. And these are the sort of lowest level that that I use uh, for for uh, recording my ideas so that I don't forget them. And sometimes when I record them, I realize that they weren't as good or as uh, extraordinary or as uh, mm, whatever quality uh, criteria I have at that moment. And uh, so that saves a lot of time so that I don't start a bigger piece, a canvas painting or such, and then uh, uh, realize that this wasn't a good idea at all. Uh, then I also create sort of medium-sized uh, things, like this watercolor painting. This is a panorama, so it doesn't really show fully here, but uh, um, but you get the idea. The the so, uh, the medium-sized paintings that take less time, and for it, and often I use these projects for my classes because I think that. Uh, for for a class project, a piece that takes a couple of hours or so is is the best project for learning new techniques, uh, learning new ideas, and such. So uh, that's often uh, uh, how I create, and and I also sell these pieces if somebody asks me to, but I don't actively sell these pieces. And then I create bigger paintings. Uh, and w what you can see in the background here, and uh, they are usually canvas made on canvas or canvas board, and I use either acrylic paints or oil paints, mostly oil paints recently, and they take a lot of time, especially oil paints when they take so much time to dry, and I need many layers. So uh, they, I don't want to start an oil painting if... Uh, if I'm not confident that I have enough ideas that I can uh, work for a while and then um, uh, start adjusting. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later, but, but you get the idea, idea what I think about setting up a process uh, that feeds you, that uh, every, uh, when, every day when you have different days, different moods, different... Uh, kind of days idea wise too you can you can use that process to be as um, uh, to create as often as possible so uh, but then there's also other kinds of categories for this passionate thing because you might think about uh, uh, something like this that you might think about actually developing something that is repeatable and scalable, that you want to build a product. It can be just a single pattern, for example, sewing or knitting pattern, or simple instructions for, uh, for creating um, an art journal page, for example. Uh, you, can, uh, you might want to make prints and sell them. You might want to build a class and focus on building a really good class. You might want to develop a service uh, so that, uh, for example, a service um, uh, to uh, to get people to uh, know art better or to introduce people to art or just uh, make a video to your YouTube channel. And you want to focus on really on the building side of the things. And I've... I've uh, emphasize this and not so much about selling and stuff here. I think that's another an, another category because, uh, you know, product developers, um, there's a certain mindset there. It's a designer's mindset that you want to start looking for the generalities. You want to start looking at the components where you can start building a new thing. And then you might want to think, how can I repeat this thing? So it's a different than creating a unique piece of art. 
uh, this developer's mindset. Uh, Linda says, lovely back, baby. Uh, this is actually a fold ba fold back that I call fold backs. And I used to make them. First, I made um, just a single back. And uh, I thought that uh, that's, a, that's a really good idea because I loved crocheting. I loved I love knitting and I love sewing and I wanted to combine them in a one bag. But then after creating the first one, I started to think if I could create the second one with the same concept. And then I started to think that if I could sell that at Etsy. And uh, then after that, uh, I saw the after creating something like 40 or 50 of them, which was a really hard work. I started to think that maybe when there are so many knitters and crocheters and this and uh, sewers, maybe they could make their bags. So I wrote a workbook about making these bags called Folk Pack Workbook. So <laughs> that's uh, uh, and Kara says the fault back is how I found Pavy. Oh, uh, that yeah. Uh, 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 actually, the f these fault backs are the way that I've uh, found many of you because I started blogging to to spread the word about this, and and the rest is history. I moved from design to art, and now I'm a full time artist. So um, this might be a route you might want to take next. And then uh, I think this category is really important. And, and to be honest, I didn't think about this category at all when I was at the beginning of my artist path. Because, uh, you know, I was a Finnish computer engineer. And I don't know if you have heard jokes about Finnish computer engineers. <laughs> you probably have, but, but you know, we Finnish are quite introverts. And uh, I didn't, it didn't hit my mind that, that actually one of the best parts in art is that passionate can mean social, that, that you can find your people, you can find people who are like-minded people, you can make friends and uh, especially you can feel less isolated because back then uh, I didn't actually think that there might be moments that I will feel isolated but if you have been creating art for a while and if you're not surrounded by artists or art communities all the time you actually start to feel uh, isolated because, you know, um, people who don't think about art, they, <laughs> I would say they speak different language. And when you haven't got the time to speak language, that's your language, it, it's, it will get really lonely. And, you know, when I started... Uh, creating art, I actually thought that I could never, never connect with people this way because I'm not so good in English. And and uh, uh, but then uh, when I when I when when I um, created for a while, I started to realize that art is the language that art connects us, and there 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 will. There's a will, there's a way when there's a will, there's a will when there's a way. That's the, that's the thing, uh, you know, uh, and, and here I am. So, so uh, this social category is really, really important. And uh, um, this might mean, I wanted to add things so that this is more grounded. And so this might mean that you will join or lead, even lead a group. And you will get, you, for some, it might mean that you will get more followers. You will post on a website, you will post on a blog, you will post on your Instagram account, you will have a Pinterest account, YouTube channel, Facebook fan base. Uh, but there are so much online possibilities too. But this might be something you do locally, 
or something you do online, uh, uh, no matter what uh, way you, you will use, uh, this might be the thing that makes you more passionate in, in art. And as said, this has been a really big part of my passion, uh, even if I didn't actually saw that um, about 10 years ago when I, when I was thinking about having a blog. I thought that blog is, is a really fun way to record what I've been creating. I didn't think so much about finding my people and such and was really surprised when people started commenting and then i i realized that i could ma market my fallbacks through that but but actually um the conversations in the comments got deeper and deeper and i got more and more involved with that and uh that has has also guided me the way sometimes other people can really guide you better than what you can find from yourself. And I don't know if you have, you are familiar with this situation that uh, when, uh, when we have, a, modesty is a big value in Finland and we don't, we don't really market ourselves or build our identity or anything like that. Well, this modesty is really highly valued. And also, um, we appreciate very quiet people. And I always felt a bit, um, how would I say, I always felt that I have to uh, draw back. And uh, it was actually quite groundbreaking for me when, when uh, uh, my first business coach, uh, Tara Gentili, uh, now Tara McMullen, she's just got married, when she told me that, I have to, you know, open up and be more brave and come on. And uh, that was actually a big relief to me. Um, then another category uh, that passionate might mean to you that you take your art to a professional level. And uh, I think that this professional uh, has many different meanings. But here I wanted to uh, go commercial enough in a way because, you know, professional also means that you uh, take care of all the aspects. You are not just a specialist who creates and who has the studio or something, but you, you, you expand your view. So some might want to say that I want to make a living as an artist. And some I want to say that I want to be recognized as an artist. And some, of, some might want to say that I want to have part of my income as an artist. Or some might want to say that I want to have uh, some kind of reward when I'm working as an artist. And this might mean that you, you want to start market, sell and make money, set up a store, sell your art. Find a shop that sells your work. Find a part, some kind of cooperation uh, thing. Set up an exhibition or join a group exhibition. Have a booth at an art show, or deliver a workshop or an online class, uh, or organize a paid event that's related to art, or use use some exp expertise that you have and combine that with your art. And, and then uh, also market and sell that. And this can, make, can mean to you that it's um, a more passionate level. But, you know, you might think that, okay, that these came in a certain order, these steps, but they actually didn't. And sometimes you want to boost your sell, sales. Sometimes you want to uh study more about techniques sometimes you want to find new artist friends or new uh, people who you can cooperate with sometimes you want to really uh focus on the process and make something that is repeatable and that makes you feel 
that you have a direction in your work. And th this changes, you know, um, uh, was it last year when I was studying uh, new art techniques and I was really focused on studying those. So what I was actually in this, uh, make, spending most of my time in the first slide. So in the first category, I mean. So um, uh, and then sometimes it can mean that you pick pieces from all the categories and you build a path to yourself that way. So then we often have excuses. And these, I don't mean, I don't know, um, sometimes choosing words is a difficult for me because English is not my native language. But I mean excuses in a meaning that they are not sometimes not the real reasons, that there are some kind of root problem behind that. Sometimes they are real reasons that you really uh, feel that they are real. But, but sometimes you can change the perspective and do something about it. And this is what especially I want you to think about uh, in this second half of this session that how you can change the perspective and then uh, move on and, and get away of those, those block, blocking uh, things, things that block your creativity or things that block uh, are between you and your best passion. So I have five excuses that I'm, I'm dealing here. I can't be so, uh, fully comprehensive, but, but I think these are the most common. And uh, uh, these are not in a particular order, but I've numbered them so that you can, you, you know where, where we are at in the presentation. But um, uh, you might want to, you might really want to take notes or have check boxes what you what you recognize that what really resonates with you. And the first is that my you say that my creative time is spent on collecting ideas and admiring what others do. One of my <laughs> most popular blog posts was titled uh, Stop uh, Stop Browsing and Start Creating. <laughs> that really hit many people. And uh, you know, uh, Pinterest is is one of the one of the websites that you get really, really easily hooked. And I think that Instagram, if you use Instagram, that has become another one. If you follow artists or if you pin art, there's always new and new masterpiece or new inspiration in the feed. And, and always uh, just run when you spend time collecting ideas and admiring what other people do. And um, this can be really time consuming and they take a lot of, of your creative time. And actually I find this sometimes even depressing and even, even um, making me, it makes me uh, quite passive when I think that why would I create art when everything has been created already and, and I get these gloomy thoughts and, and uh, yeah, China and Wendy say that, yeah, Pinterest is a bad thing. Black hole for me is a Chan, yeah, de definitely. Uh, and, and the qu question I'd like you to ask from yourself is how you can say more yeses to your imagination. Because, uh, you know, oftentimes when we browse and oftentimes when we think about the art that other people create, we are saying no to our imagination. And I don't mean that we shouldn't follow art or we shouldn't be passionate in that way. I, I love to follow artists and I love to, uh, and look at old art. That's my my one of my favorite to look old art and see what 
uh, people pin in, at Pinterest to find new old artists too. And the world of art is a big treasure chest, but you know, it's really important that you take time for your imagination too. Because uh, we currently, if you compare, for example, the Renaissance age, uh, all the inspiration that, that an artist from that age got, uh, we are really pampered in that perspective. Uh, we get even one TV commercial, one YouTube video is enough to fill out the whole week of, of self-exploration. We don't need uh, really a lot of inspiration to start creating. And, uh, and I think that, uh, for, I, I think now I'm especially talking about me personally that you know my inner engineer uh don't is not so keen on crazy associations that when i think about something and i suddenly start to think about the second thing that has no relation with the first one and then that brings to my mind the third thing and so on and so on my inner engineer says stop 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 you're not focused enough and uh, I think that this is really important to be connected with your imagination, to allow those crazy associations, to embrace those crazy associations. And then tra time traveling, to see, um, uh, to, to, ex uh, to imagine what if you are in a different era, creating all there and or in a on a in an outer space, or travel to the future, travel back to the past. That's one of my favorite things to to um, uh, try to lure my imagination. And then um, then the third step might be that uh, start invent a new world. And you know, I have this crazy idea that the images. Uh, is, uh, is an example. I had this crazy idea that why do we separate people, animals, and um, and plants? So my inner engineer says that this is the most stupid question, really, that, that there are so many reasons for that, and that the, the, the world has no order if you question that. But uh, you know, I had to do this, and then I had to write there, best in show. I think it was so funny to create this kind of animal, human, plant, dressed up thing, and then call it best, best in show. And, uh, you know, uh, but then um, uh, uh, I think this has... Uh, uh, has uh, got a lot of comments from <laughs> from from people, and you know, uh, there's always some kind of connection. When you get the connection with your imagination, you get the connection with other people too, because it's all in you. Take time to accept and admire the richness of your mind; it is there. Then another excuse that you might have that you doubt if you are talented enough. And uh, one of the things uh, can be that uh, if you have no education in art, uh, that might be your excuse, that you wonder what do, what do they learn, what, uh, the people who have education in art, what can't I see in, in my art? And then you might get this gut feeling that you don't feel like an artist. And that you question that. And um, the surprising thing actually is that I have got to know people uh, during, uh, during the past four years who have education in art, who are extremely talented. I hate that word, really, because often we talk about talent that is inheritable. And I don't think so. I, I don't believe in those. But but talented in a way that they are in a way that they are really skillful, and who still say that they don't feel like an artist. And that has made me think that what is there that makes people feel this way that they don't feel like an artist? And I personally have had these moments or these 
periods of time too where I haven't definitely felt like, haven't felt like an artist. And I actually um, uh, even for the first year when I was working as a full time artist, I felt more like a designer or some kind of advanced hobbyist or or something. And then uh, uh, one person said to me that don't fool yourself, you are an artist. And I started that trick. That, that was a trigger for me to start noticing these signs, start listening to people. How do they express this? And why do I feel so that I don't feel like an artist? And uh, so this is uh, what I, I think you should ask yourself. How you can find the people who help you to grow as an artist? Uh, because I think that art... Uh, this artist mindset is the thing that you can't just, um, how would I say, figure out yourself. You need to have some company. And uh, I think that's the biggest thing in art education, that you're surrounded by these people. And the thing is with art, and this is, what I'm really passionate about, and it might seem a bit grand, but art really is more than one single separate field of expertise. It's a way to integrate different fields together. And often this approach is what is missing if you have no education in art that you think that art is, is, is a certain separate field and you start to pursue in that and then you feel you have too little time for that. But art is more like you look at things and you try to integrate and come up with the new things out of them all. And uh, art doesn't really limit uh, uh, it's not really limited that way. And if you think about lot, a lot of narrowing your focus, the answer might be expanding your focus. And so more than a talent that you inherit is a set of skills that can be learned. And I believe that every person is creative. And, uh, and I think that's kind of cliche. But I think that even more, I think that every person has a set of skills uh, already that somehow intersects with the skills of an artist. And then when you add more skills there, uh, then you, you have a skill set that you can create. There are no perfect artists. Uh, there's always some areas that are missing. So uh, perfection is, is, is not the thing to think, think about here. But also, you don't feel like an artist if you don't have the identity of an artist. An identity is more than what you create. It's what you value, what you observe, and what you lead. So when you see people discussing about something, or when you see something in the news, or when you see, uh, read something, uh, you should have this inner identity that rings bells, that this is something that is connected with your art. This is something that you have to explore further. And it can be something that's totally different field than it can be an article from a totally different field. But that is an inspiration for your art. And when you have the artistic identity, you know what you observe, you know wh what discussions you want to participate in and you know what kind of uh, things you want to lead, how you want to lead yourself and how you also can lead others when you're working as an artist. And it sets uh, values what you practice. And these are often the things that are missing if you just focus on getting better and better at technical skills. That doesn't, uh, only that doesn't make you an artist. 
Well, then your excuse might be that you have too many ideas. So many people have said to me, baby, oh, I have so many ideas. I just need to focus and I need to arrange some time to focus and work with each of that. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I don't think that's a problem at all. Here's what I think. I think that art and being an artist and defining yourself as an artist is not about which flower you want to be. If you want to be a rose or a peony or what's what so meaning what style you want to create or uh, what themes you create is it's not a subject matter. It's not a technique thing. It's it's uh, about what kind of garden you nurture. So how you keep on adding ideas while you create and, uh, you know, um, the thing why I think that uh, having a lot of ideas is not a problem is that actually most of our problems, uh, most of our ideas are really, really common ideas. They're very conventional. Uh, everybody has seen them except you. And then when you invent that, you start seeing that, oh, well, everybody has uh, invented this already. So uh, uh, when I was studying uh, as, uh, as um, industrial design, uh, we had to, fig in one exercise, we have to come up with 100 ideas so that we push past the ordinary and really get uh, some extraordinary stuff. And it was actually surprising how the group of us, who, the students, the group of students, got the very, very same ideas. So, so the, the, uh, the amount of ideas is never a problem. It's more like how to keep adding ideas while you create. So when you start a piece, how do you, if you have problems with focus, how do you keep the piece inspiring so that you keep on creating? Uh, I have actually a piece uh, that's probably seen in the background there. Oh uh, no, I don't know if it if you can see it, but I have a piece uh, that has uh, has has a face, and it's now in progress. And uh, uh, first, my idea was um, about having simple geometric shape, shapes and composition, and then have some kind of organic shape breaking that. And I had some, uh, 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 I had worked with flowers on my sketchbook, very ordinary stuff. So I thought that I could add some flower with the geometric shapes. And then I realized that, no, I want to express some human emotions. And I added a human there. And uh, then I realized that actually uh, I love to combine Renaissance art with 19, uh, 30 or so uh, kind of modern, uh, old modern style. And that kept me going. And then I saw this movie. I don't know if it's seen the, it's in the movie, The Great Gatsby, the, the, the newest version of of the movie. The newest version of the movie is, is just one of my favorite movies. I've just seen it quite recently and it was so inspiring. And after the movie, I thought, no, I want to create a big piece is, uh, uh, that is inspired with this movie. But I already had so many paintings in progress. I didn't want to start a new one. I didn't know if these ideas were a good one. So I started adding these little ideas that I got from the movie, especially from one scene to the painting. And that has kept me going. And I'm really enthusiastic about this piece, even if I've been creating that 
for a long time. So how to keep on adding ideas while you create, that's a better thing to do than ponder about having too many ideas. Uh, you, can, you can make a few sketches of the first ideas and then abandon them. They are so ordinary, believe me. <laughs> okay, then let's move on. The fourth excuse, you wonder if your art is good or bad. And I think we all are there several, several, several times, all the time. And uh, this might be something that uh, even prevents you creating, that you wonder if, if it really makes sense to keep going, if, if, it, if, if it really does... Uh, um, if you don't know if your art is good or bad, what, what's the point to continue? I know these thing, these words, good or bad, are quite controversial. And, and um, I think that they are kind of prohibited words. I think there are a lot of prohibited words in art, but <laughs> we often think using these words. So even if we say that every, every art is good, all the messes are beautiful, then we still think, oh my, I made a mess and oh my, I have really bad piece here. So I want to use those words uh, because I think that this is uh, a session where, you, where I want you to connect with those thoughts and, and I don't want to build any kind of facade or any, any kind of curtain between you and those thoughts or between us and those thoughts so um my question to you is a new question to you is how do you define quality and uh, and uh, of course art has there's there's a thing called art theory and uh this uh uh, this field studies what's the quality of art and there are books about how to define the quality of art and um, uh, these studies are not really inspiring but they talk about expression originality consistency playfulness diversity finishings quality things like that and I think that these factors are really useful to think. What does it mean when you, when you, uh, you produce a piece that's original? What does it mean if you've produced a piece that's consistent? What does it mean if you put your expression there, if, if you can deliver your expression? What does it mean that your art is diverse enough of? What does it mean that uh, you have uh, the finishing quality? And I think that when you explore different kind of angles of quality, you realize that you've actually missed some angles. And, you know, um, in general, I don't know if you've uh, ever studied quality, but there's things like quality engineering and stuff. And, and the way these quality engineers define quality is actually, it's not just one factor. It's more like the sum of many things. So the piece that is missing in your art, uh, the piece between the good and bad might not just be one big piece. It can be like a puzzle of many, many different factors. And uh, when you put that, some things in place, that will uh, increase the overall quality. Uh, and uh, that can make you uh, move forward and become more passionate. So uh, uh, quality has always been really important to me. With, uh, with the art and, and uh, sometimes I think that that quality is one of the words you, you shouldn't 
uh, the talk with art. Some people say, just say that a piece is so expressive and that's all. But I don't think it's like that. And I, I think that there's, there's a lot more to that, that too. So then uh, the fifth excuse um, uh, is if only I could find my style. I actually wanted to uh, uh, bring the, this to be the last of these excuses because I think that uh, if you've been searching for your visual voice or your visual style or if you phrase it like that, um, often when we think about that uh, in our minds, we um, use words that are connected with the word success, which is also a word we use very little when we talk about creating art. But it's somehow kind of success, that you feel successful uh, in one way or another. And, uh, and I think this is something that you think that this is a thing that is actually the root problem and uh, and uh, that will will open up all doors if you could just find that but my question is actually to go a bit deeper or a lot deeper and uh, uh, my question to you is that what's the healing power that your art and actually what you also has, because I believe that we all have some kind of healing power. And, uh, and this thought uh, has, has started when I, the, the painting that, the part of the painting that you see uh, there in the background is called Healing Power. And it's one of the paintings that, that I made several years ago. And uh, there was a time when um, I got really sad uh, news from several of, uh, of, of my students and of my friends. And, uh, and uh, I thought that if only I could have the healing power. And um, um, uh, I, I felt that because I'm, I'm not a nurse, I'm not... I'm not really good at saying consolating things, I think. Oh, that's how I feel that I'm, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm, what I want to say that I'm not this kind of healthcare professional in, in that sense. And, uh, uh, but I had this, I had this urge. So I made this painting called The Healing Power. And I, I, I thought that I can somehow express this this urge and this um how i feel feel for for this and how how i wish i could have this healing power and with this painting i it, this actually change how i think about this thing i think that we all have some kind of healing power it's not uh the traditional kind of thing i think that uh that uh, art really has the healing power and the creativity has the healing power. Uh, if it, we can deliver the healing power, uh, we are, we are much, uh, much, in a much deeper way. We don't, it, 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 it feels so superficial to talk about style and visual voice really when you connect with this. So what this could this be? I want to, I want this to be grounded, so I want to raise thoughts on this a bit, a bit uh, more. What you and you art could, for example, do, and uh, I'm now talking in the level of of value, and um, and uh, the way that this uh, actually actualizes is uh, is something that I would like you to think. So one thing could be that your healing power is to stop isolation and bring people together. And uh, I actually never thought this could be one of my healing powers, but I think that with uh, 
the I have the art community called Bloom and Fly. And if you go to my website, www.pianiumparakit.com, you will see all what I have to offer. And you can also join my community. It's a paid community, uh, but it's also it also includes um, educational content classes and such. So um, with this community, I've actually realized that one of my healing powers can also be to stop isolation and bring people together. And, uh, and, and then, uh, but then there are other kinds of healing powers too. And one thing is to inspire to take action. And I've actually uh, uh, experimented it uh, myself that I've seen so a lot of paintings that has inspired me to take action in, in some things that has connected with me with the emotional level and opened up some knots inside me. They don't, they haven't necessarily be, uh, they haven't necessarily been uh, pieces that inspire me to create. Uh, they might be pieces that um, help me to, have helped me to deal with uh, some some issues. Some of the big p things is to offer consolation. I think art has a big role in that. And we all have, in different phases in our life, we all have gr also grief. And, uh, and uh, art can really help you to deal with grief. When I was um, a child, the only art circle I could find was the icon painting circle, and uh, I wasn't even orthodox uh, Christian, but my parents let me to join that circle, and they generously took me. I was something like 10 years old, and uh, I wanted to learn art, so I joined this icon painting, cl uh, painting class. And... Uh, there, I really experimented that that uh, that art can really help to deal with grief, and uh, it made a big impact on me. Then art can also deliver hope and help to see new possibilities, strengthen a specific identity, or remind a certain value. And uh, here, you can think that what kind of identity you your art or you help uh, people to strengthen. For example, one thing that I've been thinking about, which might feel a bit superficial, but it's actually not. You know, many people who buy art uh, uh, to make the space more, um, more, uh, how would I say, more inspiring, uh, more empowering, uh, they actually uh, express themselves through inter home decor, interior design and such, and they connect with their creative identity that, that way. And actually, a piece of art can be part of other people's creative journey that way. I think that's a really, really beautiful, beautiful thing. Or they, uh, art can also remind of, cert, of a certain value or a, a, a certain, uh, even, for example, portraits often uh, represent, uh, uh, they often have symbolic meaning too. And then art can turn on the imagination, help to feel playful, entertain, uh, boost self-esteem and self-appreciation. Uh, there's so much you can do with your art and, uh, and uh, uh, for example, running a local workshop, uh, 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 even send, sending a postcard that has your piece. And I believe that you become more passionate when you're more aware of why you create. And that, I think that's... That's the really the, the, the root answer to this question, how to become more passionate. So uh, in, in September to November, I have a coaching program called The Exploring Artist. And I run this annually. This is a very, a very rare 
occasion. And it's about discovering your passion as an artist and finding the confidence to show the passion in your art and also to share it with the world. And uh, uh, last year, the group was very diverse group. And, uh, and I'm not uh, uh, saying that you have to have a certain goal to, for example, to sell. It's exactly like this presentation that you set your goals and then we go deeper with that. Uh, this is not a step-by-step -step creating class where you create after me. This is a class where you work with me uh, to find the co more confidence and to find your blind spot and to expand your view about your art and discover who you are as an artist and who you can be as an artist. And I think it's also a really good program and group to really get uh, other artist friends because during these 12 weeks, we go through six steps. Start with passion, go to your potential, go, go to your, how to process the ideas, how to grow your skills, what kind of skills you want to grow, what kind of skills you already have, uh, how, to, how to build uh, courage based on all that and how to make more impact to your art, whether it's a positive impact on you which will always have a positive impact on your surroundings or to have intentional impact uh, uh, on other people as well. I have one of the students' uh, testimonial here, and this is uh, uh, about Carla, Carla Heisten, and uh, she said that, uh, that I found my passion for art again and I'm confident now to call myself an artist that's like giving me to the golden key. Taking this class was the best thing I have done for myself in a long while. And here you can see uh, Carla and her uh, beautiful paintings. And uh, what happened with Carla here was that uh, 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 I think that she discovered a totally different style to create art and and what I I feel of her work uh, is that it's it's uh, it's uh, that the curtain has been moved away that the, it's uh, the expression has come up and uh, and uh, these these are the things I really enjoy working with people and you know these are the things that you don't get when you sign up for an art class. Uh, I don't want to because I run art classes and I'm in favor of every art, art instructor and uh, taking art classes. Uh, I don't want to, how, how I say, I don't want to uh, underestimate them. But the truth is that when you work uh, with, with a person, uh, uh, and go deeper and deeper, and when we get to know each other, then uh, it's totally different kind of help that I can give you than if I just comment one of your pieces, or if uh, if you get uh, just one comment from the teacher that says that it's so expressive, or something like that. Uh, you can, uh, when you process things, you can get so much deeper, and when you reflect them with the group and with the with the coach with me then you can uh, really dive deeper and and you know sometimes these answers are much simpler than you first would think and uh, uh, this coaching program is also one that i want to keep grounded so that that when you come to this program you choose a project uh, uh, that you work with and uh, or, or a set of projects and then you can apply it to your art and also get help with the visuals not only so that we discuss about these things with words but also that we uh, that we discuss about them um, 
uh, with the images as well. And I also deliver things how I see you as an artist. And I think it's always interesting to see how other people see you as an artist. Um, uh, so uh, I hope you join. This is only for a small group. I leave it to number the 12 because that's that's the the amount that I can I can handle uh, during that time because we have also live group coaching sessions. Uh, you get uh, 13 videos where you can that you can use to go deeper into your art. Uh, a workbook divided in six parts. A Facebook group with in-depth discussions. And this coaching program is not about how I create and how you can follow. It's more about how you create and how you can make most of it. It's about you and your art. So uh, if uh, these things that I, call, uh, that I uh, presented here really call you and if you if you uh, want to join the group of other people who see uh, who want to explore these things that's why i call this exploring artist because i think that the exploration is so essential as uh, as an artist um uh, then do join i hope you hope to see you there now at the moment when i'm uh, uh when you're here in the live, um, uh, there's the early bird sale going on. So you might want to be quick and sign up quickly because the early bird uh, sale is now on and it will end on Sunday on uh, 19th of August. And then uh, um, uh, after that, you can still sign. But when the, the program starts, it's closed because we are we are closed groups and we want I want to keep the group uh, small and tight like that. So I hope you enjoyed this. As uh, so, uh, I had so much stuff uh, to share, I hadn't got so much time to follow the chat here. Uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this session and uh, I hope you have a great day or great evening and. I hope you spend some time with your notebook or sketchbook processing these things. Thank you, everybody.